They're starting to come through, and I can't stop them. Welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. The first full trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home gave us a lot of awesome villain reveals. Green Goblin, Electro, Lizard, another Goblin, Sandman, and what appears to be Ant-Man going to town on the Lizard's jaw. Now I know everyone was pumped to see Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield appear alongside Tom Holland, but there's another character in this movie that was absent from this trailer, Venom. So I've got a theory on how Venom and the symbiotes all fit into this, and it's going to have major ramifications for the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Sony's Spider-Verse. First, let's go over everything that we know from these trailers. In the first trailer, we saw Peter approach Doctor Strange to cast a spell to make everyone forget his secret identity. And because he didn't really think it through, the spell backfires. Now we've pointed out in our trailer breakdowns that these spinning circles begin separate like different universes that have been kept apart. But as the spell spins out of control, they begin to touch and then they collide, just as the villains from the other Spider-Man franchises are colliding with the MCU. But there are four rings, one for the MCU, one for Toby, one for Andrew, and then maybe one for Venom, or maybe for Miles Morales or Spider-Ham, who can really say? So in this trailer, Strange says, When you botched that spell, we started getting some visitors. Now we have seen variants cross into other universes before. In Loki, Loki and Sylvie are constantly hopping around the sacred timeline creating Nexus events. But none of those Nexus events threaten the universes that they were in. They threaten the sacred timeline, but not the existence of the universes. So what's the difference here? Well, there's two things. One, that this spell was all about Spider-Man, the person who all of these different villains and activities spin around. This is why Strange's spell didn't attract, say like God Ultron from What If. They all die fighting Spider-Man. And this sets up the conflict between Strange and Peter, that Strange is willing to make the hard choices and sacrifice the lives of these men. But there has to be another way! There is so what makes these spider villains different from Loki and Sylvie? Why are they threatening the universe? Now we covered this in our Easter egg video, but remember the Strange Supreme episode of What If? That episode focuses on a universe where Rachel was killed in the same car accident that shattered Steven's hands. He tries to undo the effects, but the Ancient One tells him, her death is an absolute point in time. Absolute. Unchangeable. So this event cannot be undone because it would undo all of Strange's work as a sorcerer, create a time paradox, and destroy the entire universe. Or it could simply be that Strange is so important that his origin story can't be altered in any way. In any case, he does save Rachel for like five seconds before his universe is engulfed in nothingness. And that nothingness takes the form of a black liquid goo. So you know where I'm going with this. The monster that killed Natasha Yar is in the MCU. Oh my God. I'm just kidding. This nothingness moves and acts a lot like the symbiotes. That's a big clue that supports my theory. And there are comics that tie into Thor and Love and Thunder, the Eternals and Blade that support this hypothesis. So these villains' deaths were fate, nexus events in the lives of the spider heroes. If they're prevented, then this threatens reality. And what is it exactly that's threatening reality? What's happening? They're starting to come through, and I can't stop them. They they being the symbiotes. Now these lights all around Strange look familiar, like the different timelines expanding out of control at the end of Loki. But what if this is actually where some of those timelines are leading to? Like if you could look at some of those timelines from the front, you would see these rifts that are opening all around Strange. All right, so what does all of this have to do with Venom? Well, hold on to your butts. Remember the Venom Let There Be Carnage post credit scene? Eddie and Venom are on vacation and Venom says, 80 billion light years of hive knowledge across universes would explode your tiny little brain. The key word there is universes, plural. The symbionts aren't just from space, they exist in the multiverse. Now the multiverse also includes the freaky weird dimensions that we saw in Doctor Strange, like the ancient one confirmed here. Who are you in this vast multiverse, Mr. Strange? So the symbionts could have actually started in another dimension, like one of these, and now they're slowly spreading through the multiverse like parasites. The important thing is that in the post credit scene, Eddie and Venom travel to the MCU, and unlike the other villains, they were not killed by Spider-Man. When Venom shared the hive mind with Eddie, this link pulled them into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I have a theory why. 
So Peter and Strange create this spell that backfires and attracts all these spider villains from across the multiverse. It essentially made Peter into a magnet, drawing enemies toward him and the MCU. So the Venom symbiote on its own is not necessarily a Spider-Man villain, but when it joins with Eddie, the two of them together are magnetically attracted to Spider-Man just like the other villains. Remember, Tobey Maguire fought another Eddie Brock and another Venom symbiote in Spider-Man 3. I like being bad. Who knows how many other Venom-Eddie combos have fought spider heroes across the multiverse. So when Eddie and Venom, as combined as the character Venom, touch the hive mind that stretches across the multiverse, they are magnetically attracted to Peter Parker, just like all of the villains were magnetically attracted to Peter Parker. But here's the thing, kids. I don't think that Peter and Strange's spell has anything to do with this Venom arriving in the MCU, because in the trailer, when Doc Ock is fighting Peter, he says, You're not Peter Parker. Now, let's just say that Doc Ock has been in the MCU for a while, gathering his wits, meeting up with Norman Osborn, etc. Well, the hottest news item in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. The news is literally everywhere, and yet, you're not Peter Parker. For some reason, Otto was expecting Spider-Man to be Tobey Maguire. So I think that the spell was successful. And when Venom arrives in the MCU, he sees the Daily Bugle news report that Peter is Spider-Man. So he would have arrived before the spell was cast. Now, when Venom arrives in the MCU, he seems to recognize Spider-Man, licking the screen and saying, that guy which kind of makes you think that he wants to eat him. But remember, this Venom, not a bad guy. He's a lethal protector. So even though he's connected to the other villainous Venoms, this could have been an affectionate lick. I think that this is all leading up to Venom being the fourth spider hero helping to fight these villains. And these crackles at the end when Strange says, They're starting to come through. Is referring to the Venom symbiote parasites from all around the multiverse. They've come to devour this universe just like they did Strange Supremes. Now there is some precedent for this in the comics. Now hold on, this, this will get weird, but trust me, it's worth it. In the comics, there was this villain named Null. He lived in total perfect darkness. The guy is all about darkness. But then the Celestial showed up in his realm, bringing in light. And this made Null angry. So he created a really powerful sword called the All Black and used it to cut off a Celestial's head. Then Null created the Symbiont, specifically to travel throughout the universe, spreading darkness. Now the sword, the All Black, was later found by the villain Gore the God Killer, who's played by Christian Bale in Thor Love and Thunder. And you can't have Gore without his All Black sword. And the sword is also the god of the symbionts. That's why Gore is able to kill so many gods with it. So by implication, this means that Null and the symbiont god all exist within the MCU. The black goo that devoured Strange Supreme's universe could be this symbiont darkness sent by Null. And now Peter has created similar paradoxes in multiple realities with the MCU as its center the magnetic north of all these paradoxes. So the darkness would be devouring the MCU reality, the true north of all these disturbances. I think Venom is a hero in all this because he's already rebelled against his own kind. Remember? On my planet, I am kind of a loser. This can also tie into the post credit scene of the Eternals, which we did cover in another video. In that scene, Dane Whitman is working up the courage to touch the Ebony Blade, which also has a long, complicated history in the comics. But it's important to note that Null, at one time, tried to take the Ebony Blade, and he knew more about its origins than Dane did, namely that it's a cursed sword. So the Ebony Blade in that post credit scene could also be made from this same symbiont darkness. It moves like a symbiont. It makes creepy whispering sounds like the one ring tempting people. The Ebony Blade could be another aspect of Null, and these whispers could be the hive mind of the symbionts. And basically, if the villains are all attracted to Peter Parker, then it makes sense that the symbionts, who are Spider-Man villains, would be pulled toward him as well. I also think the final battle would be way more fun if you had these three really morally centered Spider-Men, and then Venom's over there just wanting to eat brains. So I think he's probably in that final battle with them at the end. I mean, you never know. He might actually be this invisible person who punches the lizard in the Brazilian version of the trailer. Or it could be Ant-Man. But actually, none of these points are the main reason I think that Venom is in this movie and that there's an army of symbionts coming. It all actually has to do with behind the scenes studio stuff. See, Sony Pictures wants to develop their own self-contained interconnected universe of Spider-Man related characters. This has been their goal since the MCU proved successful. They already have Venom and Morbius with a Craven the Hunter movie on the way. They don't necessarily 
necessarily want to keep sharing Spider-Man with Marvel Studios. I'm sure they would rather people be excited about their own interconnected universe. So placing Venom in the movie and making the symbionts the end villains places the emphasis on a Sony-owned franchise. That's the main reason I think this could be where this movie's headed. Now, look, I mean, that's all kind of super boring and a bummer. I hope I'm wrong. I'm very excited for the movie, but let me know your thoughts about it down in the comments or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Thank you.